and so I don't I don't book a wedding anymore for under five k. Usually they're around like yeah. seven seven to ten. There's it's 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 twofold, Jordan. Right? It's like you cannot become a luxury photographer unless you are a true artist, right? And mm. you're offering your clients your artistry. Super excited to have you on um, our WLMA Weddings and Wine podcast. I believe episode eight right now, and I'm excited to do this with you. I've been raving about your work. You know, I've, I've commented on your post for for a while now, raving about your work for a while. I've been really excited about the things that you've been able to accomplish. And so, for people who don't know you, you know, you're one of the top awarded by One Island, one of the top Arizona wedding photographers right now. Um, you're serving a ton of high-end luxury boudoir and wedding clients in Arizona, which has been really cool. But so people can just get a little bit of a background you know, about you. Tell us a little bit about you. What got you into weddings, boudoir? What's a little bit of, about your, your story as well? Uh, well, thank you so much, Jordan. It's great to be able to, uh, to chat with you again. Yes, I am a, um, a luxury wedding photographer out here um, in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, but have been doing a bunch of different weddings kind of all over the country. Did an editorial style shoot out in Ireland, which was super, super fun. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's been super exciting. And uh, I always tell my clients that, that weddings and wedding photography are still my first love, but boudoir is slowly becoming my second favorite, <laughs> my second favorite child. I mean, I'm never, I'm never going to stop telling couples love stories. I think it's amazing. Um, but boudoir has has really uh, kind of stolen my heart. It's it's an amazing awesome. subgenre or genre on its own. So yeah, I absolutely love it. So that um, that has been growing as well here over the past couple of years. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. How did you get into the wedding photography and boudoir uh, <laughs> photography world as well? What did that kind of journey look like? It's really bizarre, and I <laughs> I almost I always like feel my clients out before I actually tell them my story. Cause it's a little weird. Um, <laughs> I used to be a, um, homicide crime scene investigator for the Phoenix police department. Yeah. Mm. And so my master's degree is in forensic science and that's where I learned the physics behind photography, but I had not picked up a camera, um, until I was in like my, you know, early to mid twenties. Um, and obviously, uh, the artistic outlet <laughs> for that was not very large. Um, <laughs> and so I was, you know, I, I was working, I, I was a working homicide investigator and, uh, my sister-in-law decided to get married down in Cabo. She did not put a whole lot of thought into the photography and, uh, asked somebody to come down that, um, was not a professional. I happened to have my gear and she was like, please, Rachel, please just like shoot it so that I have something. And so all of the pressure was taken off, right? Cause then I'm basically just like the backup. It's not my fault that the whole day is screwed up, right? <laughs> so yeah. that's what I did like my first type of wedding shooting. And I, I fell in love with all of it. Like the, the fashion-y elements of it and um, the portraiture specifically is what I totally loved. So. That, that's when I started, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That, that's awesome. And I think that's, I know, I'm not remembering now, we talked about that a while ago. And <laughs> and that's, I think that's the first I, I've heard about, like, someone being, like, a crime scene photographer. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what's interesting, though, is, um, I don't know if you've been on Creative Live before, right? Like, that the photography and, like, artistic, yeah. you know, pretty much creative training. Um, there's a guy on there out of South Africa and he, Brett Florence is his name, amazing, amazing photographer. And if, if people mm. are interested in like watching people who have really built luxury brands, I highly recommend checking him out. Um, but That's he awesome. used to be a police photographer Wow! <laughs> in, in South Africa. Yeah. And so he would, and this was back in like the film days, right? So he had to make sure <laughs> That his evidence of uh, film was not like shot over or like, you know, like if he did a role like half at a crime scene and like half at a wedding, <laughs> you have to be really careful with that. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> so I, I felt that's a little kindred a really cool spirit story. with him when, uh, when, I, when I learned about that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Check him out. That's he's, awesome. He's an amazing photographer in his own right. Yeah, for sure. Curious, I guess, like from being a crime you know, like a crime photographer, how long did it take that transition to like, you know, 
really make that jump to like, all right, I'm doing weddings, I'm doing boudoir, yeah, I'm jumping into that yeah. world and everything? Well, so uh, working homicides at the time, I was doing like 70 hour call out weeks, um, which is pretty mm. crazy. And uh, then I got pregnant uh, with my son. And I, you know, my husband is amazing. He, he works from home as well, sort of. I mean, back, this was pre-COVID, so he was traveling a lot. He's in sales, like kind of, kind of a different world than ours, but kind of similar. And I yeah. thought, no, he's at home, right? So like he can stay at home with a three-month-old baby, no problem. <laughs> Turns out <laughs> uh, babies need their moms. And so we talked a lot about the amount of time that um, that I was spending um, with the city mm. and like what, you know, our lives were looking like and, and what I really wanted to do. And that's what he asked me. It was like, if you could do anything, if you did, what would you do? And I said, I want to shoot weddings. And he was like, then that's what we'll do. So he was super, super supportive. So I, I left the city when Wyatt was about half a year old, like he was like six months old. Um, yeah. and that's when I just really started focusing on photography and, and building the brand and, you know, learning all of the business stuff, uh, that's involved with photography. So that was about, well, he's eight now. So about, uh, seven and a half years ago is when I really dove into it full time. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. Now also wanted to dive into, to this as well. So you have absolutely stunning work and you've been in award a lot you know with one island I actually want to show some of this this is my oh, first time you. using the share feature let's see if this works okay <laughs> <laughs> let's see tech it's great when awesome. it works oh there yeah. it is yeah. are, are you seeing what i'm seeing as well i am there it awesome is. awesome mm -hmm. so you got silver with one island you know with this destination shot here absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous love this love this um let me scroll over here on this next one engagement session finalist with this photo over here, um, mm -hmm. wedding party finalist with this photo over here as well. And oh, then goodness. you have another wedding one. Um, I think it's over here. Let's see if this will load. The one that's at night, which is such a sick yeah. shot as well. But shot, as right? I'm kind of going, um, so showing these as well, mm -hmm. you know, who have been some of your inspiration when it comes to your work? what you've yeah. created, um, the style that you've developed through the years, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So when I first got into, oh, there it is. <laughs> love that. Uh, I love that shot. That was a super fun run. And those wins, Jordan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. I just got to tell you. So this is, this is in the Glamis Dunes, um, which is in California. It's about like a, yeah like a four hour drive for me. Um, but all of my couples have been obsessed with this location. This is where they shot, mm. um, the first star Wars movie. Um, like this oh. was Tatooine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's bizarre. It's like you're driving through like California farmland and then you take a right and all of a sudden it feels like you're in the Sahara desert. It, it, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. So, uh, That's but this guy, these guys, Jackie and Chris, they're such troopers. I just, this was their engagement session. I shot their wedding um, a few months ago, which was also Beautiful. spectacular. Um, but yeah, it was 30 mile an hour winds. And I don't know if y'all have ever been in 30 mile an hour winds <laughs> in, uh, sand like this, <laughs> but the Canon guys were not happy with me. <laughs> I sent in my stuff for services and they're like, what in the actual hell did you oh, do your man. hair? And I, I did, I dropped my 70 to 200, uh, in one of the dunes. <laughs> but I, I mean, shout out to Canon, man. I know everybody's switching to like lighter gear. Um, but that stuff has been through been through the ringer yeah uh yeah but anyway like that was that was really amazing um and now that's I awesome the question that you asked me jordan what did you oh inspiration oh, inspiration yeah 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 um so first and foremost my main guru um of all time is jerry Giannis. um i don't know mm. if you're aware of him but he is an international wedding photographer out of um Australia, Australia, New Zealand. He's going to kill me. Uh, Australia. I'm going to say Australia. I'm going to stick with Australia. Yeah. <laughs> um, he is amazing. And I found his work when I was, when I was first starting, I, I loved everything like style yeah. wise. Right. And out here in Arizona, I blame Jose Villa, but like <laughs> everybody was really getting into that fine art film look. And I totally get it. Like it's a style and it's a look. And I, I always explain to my clients, it, it's like the difference between like watercolors and oil on canvas, right? It's yeah. just a different style and people mm. are drawn to it for different reasons. Um, so Jerry 
he his work is very um to me it's very classic like true to life he's digital um very dramatic when it comes to lighting and and off camera flash and just understanding lighting he's an amazing portrait photographer and he really understands light all different types of light available light off camera like video light and all those things he actually um developed his own special video light called the ice light mm. and so he yeah i just in my mind, he's a true artist when it comes to photography, mm. right? Because he under yeah. like that is what photography is, right? It's painting with light, and so exactly. he understands all of that. And uh, yeah, his 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 work is very like fashiony and dramatic, and kind of like I don't I don't know like city and urbane and global, kind of all at the same time. Um, and so yeah. I, yeah, I really, really love his work. Um, and he's, he's been a guru of mine since I started, um, Rocco Ancora, who I believe is a friend of his, I've done a lot of his stuff on creative live, um, when it comes to editing and, and learning that hmm. Scott Kelby, um, I'm one of the, those photographers that I almost enjoy what I can do in Photoshop as much as shooting um i love it i yeah. know some photographers would rather have their teeth pulled out than than sit in photoshop for hours <laughs> and, um but to me it's just an extension of my of my yeah. tools right for the art um so i absolutely love that um scott robert lim out of um california he's also a really amazing digital portrait wedding photographer um so yeah so those guys are like my main my main dudes that um, that I've followed for a long time and that really inspire me. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's awesome. And I, I see that as well with, when it comes to the fashion style that you have in, in, in your work, when it comes yeah. to the way that you edit and, and light things. One of my favorite photographers, one of, he was actually the guy that got me like really into wedding photography like maybe like 10 years ago. But Marcus Bell, he's in Australia as well, if, if he's in, from Australia. Uh-huh. And I never really did his... He does a lot of like wedding scapes and everything, but I think what really inspired me with like Marcus Bell work was like his photojournalistic work, which is mm-hmm. what I try to replicate a, a lot and everything. But that's amazing. That's amazing. Now, kind of getting a feel of, of this as well, so people can get a feel of like how they can get to the place where you're at attracting more of these higher end, maybe luxury clients and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been able to book a lot of high end luxury weddings and boudoir clients. Um, what have been some of your, your, the, some of the business strategies that have helped you get to get you where you are today and everything. Yeah, I think when when you ask me that, it, it makes me think about something that I think is kind of counterintuitive that I think photographers need to think more about. Um, something hmm. that I do now, um, and and you you teach this um, right, and in the wedding um, and lead machine, like you teach it, but. I've really, I've really realized going, going through that and then through the years and building this, that the truth to it is really complex. And so I, I want to mm. kind of highlight this. So I do not book any weddings anymore um, without meeting with my clients. Mm. Like even if they email me and say, hey, we want to book you. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I have to. I have to talk with them. And what it has turned into is hmm. really, it started kind of salesy. It kind of started as like, this is how I'm going to present myself to my clients, but I am interviewing them. I am interviewing mm. them to see if we are a good fit. And it might seem counterintuitive, right? Like it might be like, well, Rachel, if you, if you, you know, you, and so I don't I don't book a wedding anymore for under five K. Usually they're around like yeah. seven, seven to ten, depending on, on, on what my clients are looking for. But um, but I you know, if that's where I'm at and you would think, well, you would just want to book as many as possible, right? Like that's what you would want to do. And what I have found is twofold. When you do that, when you meet with a client and they feel like they are being interviewed it automatically escalates you to a, another level, right? Like you become yes. the, the, you know, you become the professional, you become the person that, that authority knows authority in their eyes, the authority figure. Exactly. Exactly. And for me, I've, I've only had one horrific review in my career, like <laughs> not on wood. Um, and when I look back on it, 
yes, I do think the client definitely overreacted to the issue that she that she was having. But yeah. I also realized that if I'd been honest with myself during that interview, they were not the couple for me. And why is mm, that, right? I've why is that, that too? There's, it's, it's, it's twofold, Jordan, right? It's like you cannot become a luxury photographer unless you are a true artist, right? And mm. you're offering your clients your artistry. That's, that's in my, my personal opinion. Now, all of our yeah. art is different and it can be a different style, but you have to be a master of that to make people pay you for that. It's not enough to just, yeah, it's in focus and it's properly exposed. That an iPhone can do that now, right? Like, so yeah. there has to be something that you are selling to people that they are paying this kind of money for. And for me, when I meet with my clients, the, I, the first thing I ask them um, is, you know, have you had a chance to look at my work, right? Because a lot of my clients are coming to me through um, through wedding planners now and resorts that I'm yeah. that I'm a preferred vendor at. Um, so usually they say yes, but sometimes they haven't. Sometimes they just got my name, right, and and my <laughs> my phone number um, from a planner. So I always ask if they've looked at my work, and we make sure that style wise we're on the same page, right? Because if they're going Jose via watercolor, I'm not the girl for them. And no, I'm I, I'm not I can't. I'm not going to shoot in a different style that doesn't make sense, right? Like you should hire yeah. an artist who is amazing in the style that you're looking for. So that's the first thing I check with them. And it's happened. I've, I've had um, clients who are like, oh, no, I, I really like that. I really like the watercolor. And I'm like, that's great. I have some wonderful friends <laughs> that, I'll, that I'll send you to them, right? Um, that, but that's just the first question. Typically when we're hmm. in those meetings, um, the style question's already been answered because they've seen my work and they like it. The second one, though, is super important. And in my mind, this is how like, I educate my clients. And it also determines whether or not I'm going to work with, with a client. Is which, hmm. how, there's two camps, I feel like, that wedding photographers fall into when it comes to how they run the day of a wedding. How, how they run the photography, how they run the wedding, right? Because, I mean, you're the photographer, you're there <laughs> the entire time. Um, and you do kind of become, right, the person that's, that's determining the schedule to a certain extent. And in my mind, there's two camps of us. There are the directors, and then there are the photojournalists. Now, I'm not saying that photographers don't have elements of both, right? But when you yeah. look at somebody's work, you you can see very quickly what camp they tend to gravitate to, right? So like the glamorous Hollywood looking portraits that I take, that my brides mainly are like that. I want that. That doesn't happen photojournalistically, right? Like I don't know it doesn't walk into the room, right and like she's just like magically perfectly <clears throat> posed and like the composite like that doesn't happen, right? You have to have a director that is going to say, "Hey, bride and mom and mom and bride, I know like you're getting ready to get into the dress and everything, but let's go back out in front of this gorgeous light and let me, yeah. you know, compose it the way I want," as opposed to shooting it in this like horrific little bathroom with like god awful raking fluorescent lighting and clutter all up right. Like directors will do that. Directors yeah. will stay. Will stop a moment, <laughs> right? At, at certain times. I mean, they're. God forbid you would ever do it at a ceremony, but during the time that you have control, a director will stop that and will will do what what we do. Um, the photojournalists are very different, I, and I'm not saying that they're not artists. I, I'm, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that they run a wedding very differently, and their 100%. their love, right? Their art is those very authentic moments. So they're just going to let you go, right? They're going to let you go, and they're going to capture it beautifully in their way. But if that doesn't match with your client, then you are going to end up with some sh some shitty reviews. <laughs> Part of my <laughs> life, right? But like. Yeah. And, and that has happened to me too. I, I, I meet with my clients and, you know, we get through the style stuff and they're like, and I explain that to them, the two different camps. And they're like, Rachel, like I, I, photojournalism is what I want. I want you to be a fly on the wall. I don't want people, yeah. you know, helping me pose or like, I want it to look very quote unquote natural, um, which is fine. I mean, I, I yeah. personally feel like there's nothing natural about a wedding, uh, right? Like you're spending all this money on a dress, you're spending all this money on tuxedos yeah. and whatever, and we're standing in lines and we're saying, you might want to look effortless, but you don't want to look natural. Natural to me is yeah. like sitting on a couch eating Cheetos. But, but so that it's really important, right? Like narrowing in on who your client is, is not important 
because you just want to book higher weddings, right? Because you just want to yeah. book more, more money. But it's important because it lets you develop as an artist. And when you do that, people will be willing to pay you, right? Because exactly. you're offering them something that other people can't do, and it's your artistry. So that was a very mm. long-winded way of answering that question for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's I, I love that, though. There's the two things that you said I love that is, one, and this is such an important thing to remember for people who really want to get into the higher-end market, to to be – that get book those five to even ten thousand dollar weddings. You must truly be an artist. And I love using the example. I have a friend who works at a art studio, and they'll do these things for like artists who paint things. And when people look at their art, they're selling this piece of art for like ten, twenty thousand dollars. It's because they have that authority as the fine art artist. You know what I mean? Right. And you right. need to be able to have that authority as a photographer as well. And two, understanding your realm, your niche, and being able to sell and get people sold on that same process. And so it's like mm -hmm. when you're meeting with these couples, you're very clear on how the process on how you get these photos that they're not candid. They look candid, but they're, they, they has an extra umph to right. it right. and getting them to fall in love with that process as well. Am I correct mm -hmm. in that? Totally, totally. And so when I have those meetings, if so, if my clients make it through those first two, right? And I mean, you know, like, yeah, like it seems odd, right? Because like these are people who, if I had said something different or if I had a different stance, I would book more weddings, right? Yeah. But one, I wouldn't be shooting the way that I want to shoot, and two, I don't think I would have the reviews that I have, right? Because you can't, 100%. You can't fake that, right? Like you can't mm -hmm. fake not loving your art, right? So, yeah. so there's that. So if the couple makes it through those those first two, um, and I feel like, yeah, we're a good fit, um, then I will show them, not a full gallery, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I, lo I lost my little slide deck that I was using on Google, I don't know how it happened, but um, hmm. I will show them a full gallery so that I it, it, it does two things. It lets them understand, because they're not photographers, right? And they, like all of this is exactly. new information that I'm giving to them, so it's kind of a lot, right? So I'll show them images of like, see here, this is where I was directing. It could have happened mm. like this, but here I'm composing, and I'm thinking about rule of thirds, and I'm thinking about how her arm is being held. And so I, I allow myself to be established again as an authority figure each time I stop and explain something, right? And they get to fall in love more with my work, right? Because I get to show yeah. them elements of things that maybe I don't put on Instagram. Because like I have a pretty large Instagram following, but you know what do we put on Instagram? We put the shots that we love, we our hero shots, right? So it's all portraits, like all the time, like and it's not. <laughs> they don't get to see you know the, those beautiful ugly cry faces that I caught with the dad first look, or maybe like exactly. a more you know like landscapey kind of shot, or the photojournalism side of me that takes over when I'm in the ceremony, right? Um, so exactly. so then we we go through that. I do all of that before I talk about pricing. Um, but I also mm. don't, I don't shy away from it though. I, I will say Jordan, like I, on my questions on my, um, on my website, I use the wording that, <laughs> that you guys have, have trained us to use, right? And it's like, they're, they're applying to work with me, right? Exactly. Um, and one of the questions on there is how important is photography to you, right? So mm. even if they tell me that their overall budget for their wedding is going to be under 20,000 or maybe even under like 15,000, if they tell me that photography is the most important thing to them, and they have a and they respond to like what draws them to my work and i can tell that it's thoughtful and i can tell photography is important to them i will meet with them as opposed hmm. to if they tell me their wedding is going to be over fifty thousand dollars and their response to that question is we want photos but it's not that important that that i'm not the photographer for you Th those guys yeah. are going to bulk at that price even if they have it to spend right because they don't care and so if they don't exactly. care, why, why spend that kind of money, right? So I do, I check those things. And just this last week, I had an inquiry come in um, and they had listed that, you know, photography was not that important to them. And turns out I'm booked, 
right, for their date. And if not, <laughs> like, it's silly. It's silly to waste your time as an entrepreneur and as a business person sitting down and talking to somebody who you know is not a good match, right? Like, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. That's not business smart either, so. Yeah. 100%. And yeah. I, I totally relate because I remember I had this one couple where, like, they, the couple, they, they didn't, I think their family, they did pretty well, but the couple itself, you know, they mm-hmm. were struggling, like, financially. Um, and I, I knew, I was a little worried at first that they weren't going to be able to even, like, afford me. Um, yeah. But photography and the style that I did was so important to them. Not only did they figure out how to make it work I, and get one of, like, my top packages, they came all the way from, like, Florida the Tennessee, Crazy, right? just for their engagement session. <laughs> you know go, what I mean? Right? I mean, you exactly. find it, that's the thing, right? Is that just like what you said, if it's important to them, then they're the right client for you. And there are, I yeah. mean, I have, I had a couple that I just booked last week where, okay, I'm like, I'm not gonna make a liar of myself, but the package that they <laughs> wanted was six grand, right? But yeah. they came to me through a venue I love to shoot at, a coordinator that I love working with and a planner who recommends me all the time. And they really wanted to keep it around like 5k, right? Like yeah. 3, 45 was the most that they do. They're an ideal couple for me. I know it's going to be an amazing wedding. I get to work with all the people that I want. So I make an exception for them. Right? Exactly. So, exactly. Right? I mean, so there's, you know, knowing who, who your clients are is just so important. I can't stress it enough. Um, because you will not get to luxury status if you don't have something luxurious to offer your clients, right? Mm. And style style outside of, right? Like, is it film? Is it fine art? Is it light and airy? Is it true to life? Is it dramatic? All of those things are style. And you can be luxurious yeah. in all of those styles, but you have to love what you do and you have to find people that love your artistic vision and love what you create and then Facts. the sky's the limit for it right you know exactly exactly yeah. kind of diving into that realm a little bit too you know when it comes to meeting with these couples and everything what have have you felt have been some of your best sales and wedding consultation practices that you've done that have helped a lot for you Mm -hmm. yeah i mean a lot of going through and making sure that they hit those two marks right we match with style Mm. and they like how they like how i run a wedding those two are very very important like i said yeah i will not book if i haven't talked to you um because i i I need to know like i need to know if you know because i i'll tell you uh I'm dealing with a couple right now, bless them. Um, she wants me. She wants portraiture and that that I create, right? And he's yeah. like, well, I found a video and still photography crew um, that will do everything, unlimited hours for $2,000. And I'm like, great. <laughs> Like, go for it, man. So, like, it's kind of bizarre because they they signed contracts and, like, all this. So, literally, I am going and I'm going to shoot for, like, two hours um, to capture her portraits and then, like, let whatever craziness is going to happen occur. Um, So, I would say it is very important to get the couple um, in that consultation. So true. Right? I mean, even if they're not the ones paying for it, I have, I have wasted, I can't tell you how many hours dealing with like mothers of the brides, right. Who are paying for this and they love me. They love my style. Yeah. She wants Jose Villa. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've run into that too, where the mother has like signed a contract, paid a deposit and she didn't check with their daughter and her daughter uh, already found somebody on Instagram. Mm. That's a totally different style. And they've gone for that. So exactly. It, it's important because it's the couple, it's the couple's day. Even if they are not the ones paying for it, even if it's being gifted to them, they have to be on board or it's gonna be a hot mess. So that's that's, that's so important. That and especially yeah. um, when it comes to that as well, because let's say if the, the, the groom isn't there in that meeting and everything, you're pretty much <laughs> relying on the bride the bride selling skills if they're both not in that meeting, which may not be very yeah. good <laughs> yes, at that yes, point there. Totally. 
And I mean, I'll say, Jordan, like 80% of my brides are like, he doesn't care. Like, whatever, whatever yeah. I do, I make him happy. <laughs> and like, if that's the actual truth, cool. But I will also tell you, and I learned this from, was it from Jerry? I don't know, it was from one of the guys I was watching. No, it was um, Roberto. Roberto Valenzuela. Another one of, Ooh, I, I love Love him, Roberto. Right? I, love I him. learned so much from him. Yes. And it was in one of his creative live classes. And he was like, if you get the groom you're done because the groom doesn't get to decide anything. Right. And if he's like, yeah. Oh, I really like this photographer. She's, she's going to give it to him. Right. Um, yeah. so I do find that I can tell pretty quickly during a meeting. If the groom is laughing at my ridiculous jokes and like all of that, like I know when I've got him. Um, and so, yeah, if you can have both, both there, fantastic. Um, if not try to do some digging, uh, subtly, right. To like figure out, who's actually making the decision here, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, so, and I, and if you find while you're doing your consultation, rather than spending an hour going through it with her, she's already sold and she already loves you, if you know that he needs to be involved, g get on another meeting, right? Like, mm. don't push her, don't like, give her all the information and then say, here, go like talk to hubby to be about it. And then like, we'll figure it out. Um, because like you said, you're then relying on her as opposed to yourself being able to explain your exactly. art, right to, to somebody else. So, um, 100%. so I, yeah, I say that's very important, um, to make sure yeah. that, the, that the couples are, are in sync. <laughs> some, some things that I've, I've seen really helpful as well, especially if I've, I've seen that, if I, if I know for a fact, maybe through a form that they, they filled out or something that even like the parents are financing the wedding, mm -hmm. I'll extend the invitation for all of them to be there. It does change sure. the dynamics of that mm -hmm. wedding consultation. It can be bad, can be good. <laughs> you know, you'll never know what, what you get. But at the same time, like if, if, if the parents can see that like the couple is sold and like sometimes that can be such a good plus and you don't have to have all these different conversations, which is, yes. which is awesome as well. Yes, ever read, um, speaking of Robert Valenzuela, ever read his book, Picture Perfect Posing? No, I should have, but I hear him talk about it all the time in his training. I'm sure you watched um, the workshop yeah. in the Creative Live, so you saw it on yes. uh, in person. But that, that his yeah. book, that changed everything when it came to posing for me. I, yeah, I'm really awesome. passionate about like what he teaches and everything, but awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, he's great. He's so great. Now, so I can get a feel of this as well. This is something we talked about before last time we, we spoke, but it's a topic that once in a while comes up even in our community as well. So some people think, you know, you can't attract high end wedding or say boudoir clientele through, through Facebook ads, but you've proved this wrong many times before. I've seen some of your posts, yeah. which has been really awesome. How yeah. did you frame your ads and your copywriting yeah. to attract, you know, a higher end clientele? Yeah, I mean, and, and you you teach it too in in, in the machine that it, you are. It's a contest for them, right? Like it's a contest. It's not um, an ad, right? If they see, hey, hey, like discount, rah, 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 like that's not luxury, right? Like when you go exactly. into a Louis Vuitton store, you don't see like a bunch of shoes all in one pile, right? Like everything is presented like it's the most amazing, beautiful thing. Right. So yeah. that's how you want to present yourself. You don't want to get on Facebook and try to hit the broadest audience that you can and try to tell people, hey, I'm having all these deals and, you know, like sell, sell, sell. You want to say, like, I'm having a contest because I am crazy busy and I only have a certain number of slots available and I want to shoot for the couples that I want to shoot for. So you mm. come to me, beautiful couple, like you tell me why I should use my valuable time and my beautiful artistry to tell your story, right? And the, yeah. the other thing, and I posted a little bit about this in the community, this was a while back, but giving away free engagement sessions does sound cheap, yes. But being magnanimous and saying, I'm holding a contest for just like the most adorable, amazing, romantic couples, and out of the generosity of my heart, I'm going to gift this to the community 
right? Mm. That doesn't sound cheap at all. <laughs> that makes no, me sound like a Rockefeller, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, so it's all in the framing and it's how you think, it's how you think about yourself, right? Um, yeah. And so you, you do that with contests, right? And you, you frame it that way. You don't just say, hey, I'm giving, I'm only giving out like 10 free engagement sessions and you don't even tell them um, that, that everybody's getting one. Right, like you don't yeah. do that. Um, you 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 know you could say it's just one couple, and then you can turn around and give it to everybody. <laughs> That's fine too. <laughs> uh, but they it it has to feel like they are competing for something. It, it they have to have some skin in the game so that they don't feel like they're being sold to. Right, and, and you're not yeah. really. I mean, it doesn't work all the time, right? Um, I've definitely, I've had some. I had a beautiful couple who I thought like everything was perfect, right? Like, yeah, gorgeous, very like um, my fashion kind of style was obviously important, um, and you can find that you can you can figure that out with that question I ask about which camp, right? Photojournalist versus um, director, because I will find that it, this is usually for women, but I've had some of the grooms do this too. Um, if they don't want to be in front of the camera, if they are uncomfortable or if they're body conscious and all of these things, and they're not ready to make that leap with me, um, then I'm not for them. Right. And mm. they, they tend to go more like, I just want you to fly on the wall, like that kind of thing. So this couple that I'm talking about checked all of the boxes. Perfect. 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 Yeah. Um, and we had a gorgeous engagement session but then they decided to get married in California and his best friend was some photographer out in California. It didn't yeah. work, right? So then I ended up doing a free engagement session, but that happens very rarely, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, and so that, that kind of contest that you can run works really well. Boudoir is, is, boudoir is another beast and hmm. I've had some real good success with Facebook ads with boudoir um, but the way that I, I just need to rethink it, um, yeah. because the way that I did it years ago, I think I need to tailor it a little bit more cause I, I ran it differently too, cause it was pre COVID. And so, hmm. um, I mean, we could talk forever just about boudoir, about like setting that up and, and, and how it can be successful, but how it can really suck money from you too. Like if you're, if you're not careful, um, trying yeah. to make it luxury. So, uh, yeah, boudoir is, is an interesting one, but I will, I will say this. Boudoir, for female photographers, I think it is very important to put your money where your mouth is um, and explain why boudoir is art and why boudoir is so important. Um, I think men can do it too uh, because, yeah. I will let you guys know, drum roll, uh, I just did it. Uh, I just turned 40 and I booked a session with Jerry Giannis out oh, in that's Vegas. awesome. I did, I did, and I was like, you know, because forever I'm like try to explain to people that boudoir is, if people think, oh, boudoir is like a great gift for um, my lover, right? Like my husband's be yeah. or my wife to be or like whoever, right? And then about halfway through the session, the women are just like, this is the most empowering thing I've ever done because mm. women hate having their photos taken a lot, a lot of times, yeah. right? Like, unless you're a specific, specific type of lady, uh, like my luxury brides, right? Uh, but boudoir really is for everybody. I have shot, well, if you're of age, um, but I, you know, I've shot like beautiful, you know, could be a fitness model, 20 year olds. And I've shot yeah. 60 year olds who are, have double mastectomies. You know, I mean, it is an amazing thing to have an artist who really does think that the female form is, is beautiful, show you how beautiful you can be. And that's what I yeah. really push for boudoir, right? And so that has that's to awesome. be in your ads. That has to be in your branding. That has to be mm. so you have to be there. So, um, so yeah, so I'm 40. I don't like having uh, my photo taken, you know, uh, and, <laughs> which is bizarre, right? But I don't like it. Um, so what did I do? I went and I booked the guru, right? Like if anybody yeah. I'm going to trust, you know, to make me look good, it's going to be Jerry. Um, and yeah. so we met and oh, on virtually and he was like, what do you want to do boudoir? And I'm like, yeah, I want to do boudoir. Cause I, I, I want to show the world, right? Like that. Exactly. This is, yeah, I practice what I preach. Right. Um, and, and he's, he's amazing. He, he, because he's an amazing artist and, and really does see the beauty in people. Um, and understands posing and understands the female form and all of that. It was a very comfortable experience. So 
men can yeah. do it too, right? Um, I just think that the the female boudoir photographers have a little bit of a leg up because it's a little easier, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like it's easier for me as a forty year old woman to say, "I know, I get it, I feel the <clears> same <throat> way," and I'm going to show you how beautiful you are, as opposed to a yeah. guy. You know, I mean, Jerry's done it because he's yeah. an artist. Yeah, communicating a very well that doesn't creep them out. <laughs> it's hard, right? It's Pretty hard. Pretty much, too, you know. It's, much okay. it's easier yeah. <laughs> than you're a straight man. Um, yeah, like breaking the boudoir, you got to do it very specifically. I highly recommend yeah. uh, checking out Jerry because he's master. That's awesome. He really has. He really has. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And what I love that you, you mentioned earlier as well <laughs> is it's really what, really what you showed is – the power of words and the power of belief on what you truly are as well. Cause if you truly believe that you are a high end luxury artist mm -hmm. and you know, whether if you're running a model call, whether if you're running a free, a free guide ad, whether yeah. if it's a direct call to action, a book maybe for like hot leads or something, or maybe if it's just an ad that goes to your website or blogs, whatever that offer might be, you can yep. always frame things in a way that make that shows that you are the authority that shows right. you are that high value leader. And that's exactly what you've done. Even when it came to the model calls, uh, the free engagement session contest, yeah. like mm -hmm. it, it, you were able to change your words in a way that attracted people that saw you as that authority. And that's what I absolutely loved. And I remember when he made that post, I was like, yes, like, I'm so happy. She, she gets it. <laughs> She do. gets it. Do. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Love that. It's only taken me a few years, Jordan, but I, I got there. Got there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a question we actually had um, in the community, and I, I thought about you when 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 they saw it. So one of our, our students in the WLMA they they wrote uh, this post in the Facebook group. They said, "Hi WLMA community, my my husband and I we are thinking through the idea of me offering boudoir photo shoots exclusively for our brides." So we can generate additional revenue for Baudois album sales and add value for our couples. Any tips on how to get started? Uh, like, did everyone start with professional model calls or uh, prof sorry, professional models mm -hmm. or do a model call? So, mm -hmm. Rachel, I guess what would you what would be your advice to her? Two things. Um, I don't know why you would just do exclusively your brides. Because, like, why not? <laughs> like, why, I mean, like, I, I, maybe that's where you're thinking you'll start, right? So, like, mm. offer that. But, like, boudoir is for everybody, like I said. So, um, I think, you know, um, people think are willing to spend it. money, right, on, like, wedding photography. So, maybe that makes sense. But I would say, like, don't limit yourself. You know, like, once you figure out how to make boudoir work for you, whether that's getting a studio, whether that's shooting in your own home, whether that's, you know, um, booking um, resort rooms, which I've had issues with after COVID. Um, so, like, once you figure out how to make that work, um, then I would not limit yourself to just brides. So, um, when yeah. I, I didn't even know what boudoir was at first <laughs> when my, when one of my clients, one of my brides said, do you offer this? And I was like, Oh, mm. what? And, like, sure. <laughs> I guess we can do that. Um, and she said, well, you know, I just want a couple photos beforehand. And that is something that I offer all of my clients. So remember how I said, mm. when I have that meetup, um, I show them a full gallery. I always show yeah. them the one where the, where one of my brides opted into having some boudoir esque photos taken during getting ready. And those are super simple, right? I love backlight. Um, and so usually those shots are the bride holding her dress in front of her and then turning to the side and seeing that gorgeous line of the body, right? Um, yeah. And it's, it, it's not super risque. You're not really showing any of the naughty bits, right? And so um, the, the clients tend to really respond to that. That is how I got started. Um, and mm. so I, I was like, well, we could just add this in, right? So like, um, I'll, I'll come a little bit early, you know, during the getting ready stuff and we can take these kinds of shots. So one thing I do is I tell each one of my clients, especially if the groom isn't in the room, <laughs> cause then it could be a surprise, yeah. right? Um, I would say, Hey, you know, I also offer this as a separate, um, portrait session. If you want to mm -hmm. do something, you know, before the day of the wedding, you feel like maybe you're going to be a little stressed on the day of the wedding, you know, highlight, highlight the fears, highlight the fears. Right. And then yeah. say, you know, we can do this and we can do an album, a little book, right. That he gets to see as a surprise on the day of, or sometimes it's not a surprise, but he's still looking forward to getting that book. Right. Um, so 
that's how I got started and that's how I would recommend it. So you can, I have had models um, that, that do boudoir just so that you have something to post because a lot, <laughs> you'll see, I don't, I don't post a ton of boudoir on Instagram because a majority of your clients are like, mm, I don't want that. Um, yeah. but I was, I was quite fortunate in that several of my brides were like, hell yeah, I work hard on this body, like show it off. And because I have a pretty large, like Instagram following people like that, right? Like they like seeing yeah. hundreds and hundreds of likes on their photos. So, um, so work on your Instagram, which by the way, I don't know if you guys have heard, but I guess like posts are dead now and it's only reels. Which bothers the shit <laughs> because I'm like, I just <laughs> it out. Um, but yeah, so get on the reels and yeah, I mean, a model call is not, not a bad idea. Um, I would say this though, I, as a husband and wife crew, right? Just honestly, I don't even have my lighting assistant who I bring everywhere with mm. me on weddings and, and portrait sessions. Like I don't even have them in boudoir. It's me and the client. Yeah. And, um, so you know, because it's just, it's, it's a very specific space that you're entering, right? Um, yeah. Usually, I mean, usually it's women, unless you're talking about boudoir, which I have done, a, a, I, ha, I have, I have some advice on, on couples boudoir too, by the way. Um, so, but you're with a woman who doesn't want to be photographed unless she's one, a very specific type of woman who likes being in front mm -hmm. of the camera. Not that many of us, right? This is something special that she's doing and she's taking her clothes off. It, you, it's the most vulnerable, really, that your client is yeah. ever going to be. And even if you are the most amazing duo, you're still outnumbering her, and that feels overpowering, and yeah. that's going to change the dynamic. So, mm. so especially when you're first starting. Now, Jerry had his lighting assistant with me, and like I was fine. But I'm also a photographer, right? I, I know I've exactly how the sausage is made, right? So, um, but for most clients, that one-on-one -on -one with the photographer is really important. Whether you're female, whether you're straight, whether you're gay, whether any of those things, um, you want her to feel empowered. And if you bring more than you, then that can kind of throw off the balance. So uh, if you're using yeah. real clients, um, I highly recommend that it's just you um, as opposed yeah. to a duo. Yeah. So that's, that's my advice awesome. there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What was the advice you're about to jump into when it comes to couple <laughs> boudoir that you're about okay. to say? So there are some photographers who can make very, what's the word? Um, not graphic. That's not the right word. Very, um, uh, what's the word Jordan is say? Uh, expose kind of, it, um, um, intense <laughs> photo. Mm, okay. Um, into art. Okay. And I, I yeah, I see what you mean. Not saying that that is porn. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> they, they can do that. They can do that. Um, for me and kind of what we've talked about, right. Is boudoir is about empowering women in my opinion. Right. And that, and that's the way I yeah. see it. And that's the way I shoot them. And I think that's why a lot of women respond really well, um, to my, to my boudoir work. Um, yeah. a couple together is just different. That is a different, mm. a different dynamic, a different space that you're entering. Um, and it, it, it also can be very, very beautiful. Um, but it's just different and prepare yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I've, so the first time one of my clients was like, well, I want to bring my boyfriend and I'm like, good, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 it'd be really sad. And it was fine. It was fine. Um, and they were both, you know, they were both older and really did see it as, as an, as, as artistry. Yeah. Um, and it was fine. Uh, I have had other couples <laughs> where I'm like, okay, like, this is not boogie nights. We gotta, we gotta yeah, tie yeah. it out. Um, and so, you know, boudoir is a lot like wedding photography. You have to figure out what, what is it you want to make as an artist? What do you find beautiful? Yeah. What can you authentically create for these people? And then go with that. There's, there's an amazing mm. um, boudoir couple out of, um, out of Canada. I think they're on creative life and everything yeah. I just said, they would completely disagree with. And they're very, very, uh, uh, established and, and they're very successful at what they do. So 
you have to figure out, you have to be authentic, right? And I didn't know what that meant for so long when I would hear yeah. people say that, right? It's like, well, I'm me. So, you know, but you have to be authentic to your artist's voice to make mm. people want to buy it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because if you don't know the story you're trying to tell, then why would somebody want to buy it? Exactly. Right? You know, it's, it's not about the camera. It's not and you about, want me to communicate it in a powerful it. way where they actually see that true value as well. Yeah. Yeah. You have Love to that. figure out your story. And I say that that is the key to any to any photography that, that any, if you think about it. Right. I, I had a, a friend of mine who was in crime scene and she wants to get into photography, artistic photography. And she sent me some shots that she did a portrait and she asked me to critique it. And what I find when I'm asked that is that the majority of the time, it's not that they picked the wrong lighting and it's not that they didn't compose it right. And it's not that the, you know, the person isn't pretty or like whatever. It's none of those things. It's what were you trying to tell me with this picture? And if you hmm. know, then it's a good picture. If you don't, yeah. then it's very obvious that this is just a shot, right? Like, so, you know, the, the one shot I'm thinking of is the girl turned and looked at the camera and she took the shot and she's a pretty girl and it's nice, like flat lighting, you know, no, no crazy highlights. Everything's fine. Um, what, what are you trying to tell me? Right? Like what, what's yeah. the point of that photo? She's a girl in a photo is, you know, and yeah. when I am, when I'm directing, when I'm talking to my brides, there's always a story in my head. What is it? Right. Yeah. Is it, there's that so much nervous. more depth to it. Yeah. Is she trying to seduce her lover? Is she like, right? Like you have to tell a story. That's what we are. Um, as exactly. Artists. And so if you don't have that, then you will make amateur photography and then you will not reach the luxury level. Right. So tell your story, mm, whether it's love that. or whether it's, it's wedding, right? There is, there's a reason that you took that photo and how she's connecting to the camera, the angles that you're at, the leading lines that you have, the lighting that you decided to use, all of these things help you tell the story. And if you don't think about all of them, that's when you get those photos, right? When I first started, yeah. I, I would look at I would look at a photo that I took and I'd be like, well, what? Like, what is it that makes Jerry's <laughs> Roberto's like so much better? Yeah. And it's not necessarily technical, it's the story. Right. It, it's mm. how, how the shot was composed um, and what it was. Yeah. Love that. Love that. And there's there's this one photo that I took. Oh, most of my work was mainly photojournalistic. The stuff that I really mm -hmm. felt so connected to was really photojournalistic. And there's yeah. one of this photo that I took a long time ago. It wasn't even like a super luxury wedding, but it was like the shot that I took where the, the we we're trying to there. The groomsmen were trying to hide the bride. So, um, <laughs> So the, the, the group wouldn't see when they're moving from different locations. So they had their coats yeah. over the bride and oh, everything. I love it. And it was one of my favorite photos. It wasn't a perfect photo, but mm -hmm. it was one of my mm -hmm. favorites. And I submitted it to fearless photographers and I won an award, yes. award from it and everything. And what they love, what they wrote about it was like, we don't know quite what's happening. Maybe they're hiding, you know, the bride, maybe it's starting to rain. But there right. is like there is there's depth in even though it's not like the perfect composition, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. What we, you're able to get, especially as a photojournalist, you know, yes. so much can happen. But yes. they could tell that there is so much more depth in the story, and you can do that when it, even when it comes to stuff that you direct, like what mm -hmm. you do and everything as well, which I absolutely love. But so true, so true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, so we can really get to some of the stuff for the photographers that are are regularly jogging. Yeah. This is a question I love to ask. Um, a lot of our members in the WLMA, so people can get a framework on what they should do if they feel stuck. If mm -hmm. you had to start all over again, what would you do to kind of get the business back to, you know, say where it is today? Yeah. So it's interesting because it goes back to what you say in the training all the time. And people kind of, I think a lot of the times when you're like starting a business, you want, you want, you want results, right? Like you want to do work so that you make money. <laughs> like that's what you need. Yeah. And so when we hear, when they hear people like me or people like you say, you need to know yourself, you need to know your client, you need to do your research and figure, you know, be your, your authentic artistic self and figure out like who that is you're selling to. I, if, when you asked me that question, I thought you have to know that, right? Because I know who I am now. 
right? Like I know who yeah. I am in the Phoenix market and I'm a luxury photographer. So if I move to San Francisco or San Diego or back up to Seattle or like whatever, how would I establish myself? Well, I would establish myself knowing that I am a luxury photographer. There's certain things that I would do, right? Hmm. I know that a majority, a lot of my leads right now are coming from the relationships that I created with planners and resorts, right? And yeah. those are not relationships that you just make and then like, sweet, great. Now they're sending me, you know, 10 leads a week. That's not what happens because everybody knows in the wedding industry, turnover is really high, right? So I had a coordinator that worked at an amazing resort here. Um, I was on their preferred list and then she left and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so now I'm reaching back out and I'm not on that yeah. list anymore. <laughs> because this coordinator has mm. different photographer friends, right? So I got to work my way back, right? I have to, I, I mean, I already have weddings booked there because that's, you know, the, it doesn't always just come from the coordinators, right? Yeah. Um, and so that was impressive, right, to her. So you have to know who who are you targeting, right? Now, maybe you're like, well, that's all well and good, Rachel, but like, I'm not an established, you know, luxury photographer. That's not even what I aspire to. I want uh, yeah. quantity. Right, like I want to, sh I want to shoot mid market, and I want to shoot a lot. Well, you have to know that, right? And then yeah. know, okay, which venues are likely going to be bringing in right those those couples, and you go and you talk to them, and you give them free, you know, lookbooks, and you offer to do styled shoots, right? To to establish yourself in the market that you want to be in, right? Yeah. Um, and so, I would say, if I was starting totally new, right? I would do that. <laughs> I would mm. say, you know what? Deep dive. I don't have, right? Like, I don't have the portfolio yet, like, to go into the Phoenician or the Royal Palms or some of these, like, high-end resorts and say, see, like, look at all my amazing work. These are the people that I've shot. This is where I've shot. If I didn't have that, then I would start mid-market, right? And I would go to the yeah. resorts that tailor to mid-market uh, clients, and I would, I would do anything to ingratiate myself with them and do hmm. what they need, right? They, they need exactly. a styled shoot to show off their venue, right? Because they need Instagram content and they need Facebook content and they need all this stuff, right? So you make yourself known um, with the wedding vendors that are in your, in your market, right? And then yeah. you work your way into where you want to be. Um, so yeah. And I mean, and the Facebook ads and things like that, you can do, you can do right away, right? As long as you yeah. are, I mean, and the people who are in your program are established wedding photographers, right? Like these aren't yeah. guys that are just like picking up a camera <laughs> for the first time. So if you're the artist and you're just, you know, maybe you were portrait before and now you're getting into weddings, you know, you need to build up your portfolio. You, people need to see what, what you can do. And then you need to make the connections with the people who you're going to be working with, you know, like yeah. that's, that's, that's super important. Mm -hmm. So yeah. kind of re reviewing that, let's say you do at least have like a portfolio and stuff. You move to a no mm -hmm. new location. First thing, really deep dive in who it is you really want to serve kind of thing mm -hmm. to network with the right venues and maybe vendors that, that are t around that same realm around there mm -hmm. and really build those connections and run ads so you can generate leads right away as well, correct? Definitely. And don't, awesome. don't be shy about it. <laughs> when mm. I knew what I wanted to do, even before I had shot the high-end luxury weddings that I had, I... Uh, mass blasted everybody. <laughs> one of my, one of my good, my really good like vendor friends, his name is Greg Worth, and he was at the Phoenician, which is a, a very nice resort here um, in Phoenix. You know, it's very simple, especially when you come into the wedding industry to feel kind of overwhelmed by everything because it is like a huge, it's an ocean, right? And here you are, this little fish. Yeah. Um, but that did not stop me from reaching out to luxury wedding planners coordinators at the resorts and just saying, Hey, I'm new and, and I have some stuff that I want to show you. Can you meet with me? And you would be surprised how many said yes. Right. Because wow, the wedding yeah. industry is, we, we have high turnover, right? So maybe, um, you know, they had a photographer that has only shot there and th that that's the only person that they recommend. And maybe she retired or maybe she had a kid and she's not shooting anymore. Maybe she moved to San Diego, right? Like you never know what's going on. So you always want to, put yourself in a position to make a connection that could work. 
If it doesn't mm. work, if they don't email you back, whatever, right? Or <laughs> they don't return your phone call. Do people phone call you? I don't know. Like only old people. <laughs> like text messages or emails tend to work all uh, right. But but you know you're not out anything, right? Like yeah. trying and putting yourself out there. The worst that they're going to say is no, and the best thing that they're going to say is yes. And then you get to make a connection that can be very very lucrative for you in the future. So that's exactly. I, that's definitely um, something that I that I that I push. Um, that making connections that. in the industry is, is, is super important and don't sell yourself short and think, well, I'm not established yet. So mm -mm. if you have the passion for it and you have the talent and you can show it to people, do it right. Like don't, yeah. don't be intimidated. Um, just put it's so yourself true, out so there. So true. And that's one thing, especially when I, when I meet with people who are about to join the WLMA and stuff and they have like bomb work and, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, you know, but I'm not really establish I'm like you can with the, how where your work is at you could probably charge ten thousand <laughs> right? at right? that point kind yes. of thing yes. and that's but so true being artists. able to see that in in your work <laughs> and just being like it, it doesn't matter if I'm established I have the talent and mm -hmm. being able to sell yourself in that in that as well yeah what's one piece of advice you would give to photographers struggling in the industry if you were to give one piece of advice to them get real self-reflective Take a minute mm. and say, is what, if you're, if you consider you're struggling, what is it that you feel like you are not succeeding at? And then look at that and say, is that really what I want? Right? Mm. Because I've thought like there've been years and my life is like crazy right now. We're getting ready to like launch a new business. One of them, the wedding planners, I, but you and I, we got to talk because this is going to, it's going to going to change the world. Uh, but anyway, yeah. so I, I've got a lot of different things going on. Um, but there was a time pre COVID where I was like, no, just wedding photography. That's the only thing I want to focus on. That's the only thing I want to do. And I want to book X number of weddings a year. Right. Yeah. And I found when I wouldn't hit that goal, then I considered I was struggling or that I wasn't succeeding. Mm. Right. <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, is if I really look at it, is that what I wanted to do? Because if, if the number was the most important thing, then there were things I could have done that uh, would have would have been bookings, would have made money, right? Like, yeah. I can't stand corporate events. I can't. Yeah. Um, but they can be really lucrative, especially here in Phoenix. Like people, I mean, you know, like they'll pay you, they'll pay you for it. Um, so was, was I really struggling or was I not going after the thing that I wanted? And the thing mm. that I wanted, was to shoot the weddings that I wanted to shoot and shoot the boudoir that I wanted to shoot and have people pay me the amount of money that makes sense for the artistry that I'm giving them, right? And yeah. it's not just the shooting, it's the post-processing. I do all my own post-processing. I don't let anybody else touch my stuff. I know everybody is gonna say I'm crazy, which I am, <laughs> I appreciate that. But that's also why I charge them when I charge, right? Because yeah. every single image is my art. <laughs> It doesn't yeah. matter, right? But so, but I had to really sit down and be like real honest with myself about that, right? Like, yeah, exactly. I am happier, and I consider myself more successful when I book less weddings, but I book the ones that I really want. And it turns yeah. out that I really like uh, photographing very luxurious, uh, bougie weddings. <laughs> that's not that's, yeah. that's not necessarily for everybody, right? I mean, like those brides can be. It can be something, right? And that, that's yeah. not for <laughs> right? So, but so be honest with yourself. If you feel like you're struggling and you're not succeeding in the industry, why is that? And then hmm. evaluate your goals and figure out, are those the goals that I should have, right? Like, yeah. if I, you know, why didn't I book 50 weddings that year or 100 weddings that year? Because I would meet with them and they weren't the right couple, right? Exactly. <laughs> like, you know? And so I just I just didn't do it. Now, if my goal had been different and that that was it, right? It was like make make the money and shoot as much as possible, then you will change your actions to fit the goals that you actually want. So mm, right? That's like cool. That, I would love that. Yeah, that's my advice is to reevaluate and really ask yourself what you want, you know, because yeah. you might find that, uh, no, <laughs> maybe you don't want to do weddings. Maybe you, maybe you really just love boudoir and you're like, nope, 
this is what I should do. I should, there's a, exactly. there's a boudoir photographer. What is it? Blush, blush boudoir. Check them out on Instagram. They're freaking amazing. Um, and they have a studio and I think it's like Kansas city or something. And I'm like, you know, maybe that, that's amazing, right? Like maybe if I just focused on boudoir and I'm sitting and you're listening to myself and I'm like, that's not what you want, Rachel. Like that's not, that's not exactly. your goal, right? Like, do you want to do that? Do you want to do five boudoir sessions a day? Like, no. Right. But that's what's yeah. accepted for them. <clears throat> So, you know, exactly. you have to be careful not to compare yourself and your journey to, to other people's goals. Business. Right. Exactly. exactly. You know, I mean, there's um, one of one of your great guys and oh, I can't remember his name. Um, he's got glasses. He's adorable. Tom. Um, he's in, who is it? Tom, right? Yeah. Yes. And, but he is also luxury, but like his jam is like, I mean, he books a ton of weddings. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) Right. And, but I think he has associate photographers, right. And like, like a whole team. Right. And so like that is his business model and he's super successful at it. Right. If I tried to run Tom's business, I'd be, uh, exhausted and on the floor and like curled up in a ball. Right. Like that's not, that's not my area. Right. Like with me and it's just me, like I, I shoot like 90% of my wedding solo. I don't have second shooters. I have lighting assistants. That's all. Right. So you just have to be real honest with yourself about, um, about what you really want. So be careful and not comparing yourself to other people, figure out what it is that's going to make you happy or make you financially successful or whatever it is you want to do. And, um, I think if you really do that and you're really honest with yourself, then your everything will change how you talk to clients will change Mm -hmm. the type of ads that you run will change the amount of time that you spend um, networking with like certain people will change. Maybe the money that you spend on online advertising and some of the big directories will change, right? Like everything changes when you realize what you really want to do. So you have to have the honest conversation. Amazing advice. (laughs) (laughs) And and this was such an amazing, amazing conversation as well. Like I know we, uh, after it's been a couple of, I think maybe like two years since we last po- talked, but yeah. not only do you have such amazing work, but after this conversation, 150% can see why the, the, the couples pay you the big bucks. Uh, <laughs> this is awesome. Well, you, Absolutely. you taught me, you taught me. I, I came to you quite naive and <laughs> um, no, I've, I've implemented so much, um, that, that your system teaches and, uh, yeah, it's great. I'm, I mean, I'm a total convert. So, um, yeah, it was great talking to you too. Like I said, awesome. once you get to me talking about photography, it's hard for me to stop. Yeah. Where, where can we find you as well? Yeah. Um, so my website is R lines photography um and then it's the same on instagram and uh as facebook facebook as well so yeah our lines awesome yeah i'll put it in the description so so people can find you as well but yeah thank you so much rachel this was absolutely amazing oh you're so welcome jordan it was great chatting with you again good catching up